In today's video, we're gonna be talking about ceramic coating. I'm sure if you haven't been living under a rock, you know exactly what ceramic coating is all about. And you tune in to the right video because today we're gonna to talk about the whole process of ceramic coating your car. Like I said before, a ceramic coating does interest you and if it's something that you wanna take on yourself and do it as your own DIY project, this video is gonna come in very handy because we're gonna talk about the steps that you need to do before you apply ceramic coating to your vehicle. And we have the best model. We have a brand new 2021 Dodge Charger Hellcat Red Eye. So like I said in the beginning of the video, if you have been doing your research, if you just got a new car, the first thing in your mind is that you wanna protect it. Um, you wanna protect the paint, you wanna protect the glossiness of your car. So ceramic coating is probably a term that you keep hearing as you are Googling on what is the best thing that I could do for my paint. So ceramic coating is not your latest trend, it's actually been proven to keep your car healthy. It keeps your car cleaner for longer periods of times. The actual coating bonds in a molecular level to your paint. So not only does it sit on top of your paint, it actually bonds with your clear coat and becomes one with your clear coat. Once it becomes one with your clear coat, it's definitely gonna repel more dirt keeps your car cleaner for longer periods of times and makes your life a lot easier for you guys to wash your car and it keeps it glossy looking and wax looking like you guys like uh, for a long period of time if you maintain it right. It also acts like a sealant. It's a, it's a permanent sealant that protects against environmental fallout, stuff that could land on top of your paint and it gives you enough time for you guys to actually get on top of it, clean it without causing any harm done to your clear coat. So it does buy you enough time for you guys to take care of that bug etching or that bug splatter or that bird dropping that happens to your uh, car. And if you're not on top of it, it's definitely gonna etch with ceramic coating. It gives you enough time just for you guys to get back home and actually take care of it. And it will definitely help you with the more chemical resistant um, properties that it has. It's definitely a good thing to have with ceramic coating. Another key benefit is that it does make it a little bit more scratch resistant. I won't say a scratch proof, uh, even though there's a lot of uh, videos out there with guys hitting it with a lighter, uh, throwing flames at it, you know, that's a marketing gimmick. Don't fall for it. It does make it a little bit more scratch resistant. If you are looking for rock chip and scratch resistant, then your better option will be paint protection film. We have a couple of videos on paint protection. I'll link them up right here. But today, it's all about ceramic coating and all the key benefits of applying the ceramic coating and along with the process that it takes to apply the ceramic coating. With that being said, that's just, you know, scratching the surface. There's a lot more information, so I'm gonna link the Expo website below so you guys can see all the key uh, features and benefits of applying ceramic coating. But more importantly today, I'm gonna show you the process and what it takes to actually install a ceramic coating. Um, I know a lot of people are giving out different prices. There's a lot of info out there in the internet as far as like the, the process. Uh, I'm not saying that my way is the right way to do it. I'm just gonna show you how we do it here at our shop. Uh, so if you guys wanna take on it yourself, you could do it. Or if you guys wanna pay for a professional service, then you know what to expect. So, you know, these are, these are good things for you guys to know. So like that, you ask all these questions when it comes to giving yourself a quote and you know exactly why someone else's price might be higher than somebody else's. So step number one is obviously to fully wash the car. We are taking out the red eye to do a full wash. We're doing a foam cannon wash. Then we're gonna decontaminate the paint. So let me take you guys inside because I have uh, one of our new employees. Uh, he's already trying to identify what's the best uh, pad and polish combination if it needs that or if it needs a little bit more abrasiveness with the uh, heavy cut compound and uh, a more abrasive pad. So follow me, let's see how we're doing. So 
So here we have Sebastian. He's actually um, doing the little test spot for us. This way we can ident identify uh, how much swirl marks we are removing with just a light polish. Obviously we wanna go the least aggressive method first. Like that, we don't compromise too much thickness of your clear coat and we leave uh, as much clear coat as possible without you know, damaging the clear coat. So a light polish won't remove that much swirl marks but in this case, it doesn't have that many, so. All right, so this is the combination that Sebastian and I found that was best for this paint right here. We are using Optimum Hyper Polish. It is a sprayable polish. Uh, it's not too aggressive, it's not too fine. It's exactly what this paint needs. And we're using a, a polishing pad. It's not too abrasive. This one is from Buff and Shine. It's a low profile, uh, buffing polishing pad with hyper polish. We're doing about five passes and that pretty much leveled everything off the paint. It is pretty much swirl free. Obviously it's harder to see it on white. If it was a black car, you'll definitely see the swirl marks a lot more. But yeah, that's pretty much the process that we're on right now. We are polishing the whole car, getting it ready for ceramic coating. So after seeing uh, Sebastian here polishing, I'm, I'm getting myself ready because I want to get some of the action as well. So I'm going to put my handy dandy little um, apron so I don't scratch the paint. And I'm going to walk in with you guys and show you how there are different compounds and polishes. Uh, you can find this in AutoZone, O'Reilly's, or any uh, discount auto parts will have a, a different polish. There's many brands, Turtle, Mothers, uh, Meguiar's, uh, Meguiar's is very, very well known. So you can get a, a polish, a light polish, if you wanna just, if you're not really too concerned about the swirl marks and you have a light color car like this, just go with a medium cut polish, medium cut pad, and you'll be fine. Let me show you guys what we have here in the store. So here's, sorry for the mess. So we've been polishing a lot of cars. So here's one that you guys can definitely find in uh, AutoZone. Is Meguiar's, uh, you get the 205 Ultra Finishing Polish. Uh, as you can see here in the line, it's, it's not so aggressive as a cut, it's about a four in the, in the cutting um, force that it has. And then you, you pretty much, you could pair this up with uh, any, any polishing pad, honestly. Uh, try to give you guys a brand new one, hold on. So you'll basically need obviously the polish, you'll need the pad, because uh, the pad is the pad and the polish will work hand in hand and removing the little uh, soil marks that you may have. And obviously the big piece to the puzzle is the polisher. There's many polishers that you can buy. There's some that hit you know well over 500, and then there's some that are within the 100, 150 dollar range. I'm gonna show you guys both options. Obviously, whatever your budget allows, do it. Do you necessarily have to buy the $500 one? I don't think so. Um, you know, I think the Griot's, Griot's Garage makes a really, really good polisher. It's called the G8. I'm gonna show you guys that one. And then I'll show you guys the other polishers that we have here. But with this one, you guys can get a really, really good polish and it won't break the bank. So I don't think you could get this in AutoZone, but you could definitely find it at Amazon. Uh, it's, a, it's from Giro's Garage. My good friend, uh, Jeff Brown, he's been designing and part of the, the whole production line of the Griot's uh, Garage polishers and fast correcting creams. So I'm a big fan of him. I'm sure he'll get upset that I'm saying this one. Uh, I, I think you could find the Griot's Garage, uh, let me see, well, this is the wax, but I'm sure you could find the, some of the polishes from Griot's as well. Like I said, it's, I'm not advocating any brand here. Uh, I'm just trying to think outside the box and if I was to go to Walmart or AutoZone, what would I, got, what would I get? I would get a fine polish, a medium cut pad, 
And then the G9, this one, don't quote me on this, but we'll, we'll check now, but it's, it's between $120 to $150. It's a great dual action uh, machine. It's very powerful. It comes in a six inch uh, backing plate, but I'm sure you could buy the five inch uh, backing plate as well. So like that, you could fit a six inch or a five inch uh, pad. Uh, this one, I'm gonna go ahead and swipe it to the five inch and show you guys how you could correct your paint at your garage. Uh, I personally like to use the five inch backing plate. So you could definitely swap out the backing plate on this one. Oh, shoot. There you go. It comes in, it comes, I don't think it comes with a five inch backing plate. It comes with a, a six inch, like I said, but it definitely brings you the, the wrench, this wrench that I'm using here. Take it out and then you can swap out. You can buy yourself the five inch backing plate or if you don't want to, just buy yourself a six inch pad and it'll work with your six inch backing plate. Again, this is all just personal preference as far as like how I like to polish. Uh, I prefer a five inch backing plate. Like I said, uh, I got the polishing bug, so I broke out the G9, actually. It's not the G8, it's the G9. Suited it up with the five inch backing plate, put a little bit of polish, and I put my polishing pad. It's just, I'm just gonna do a couple of passes. Passes is pretty much going around the panel one time like that, two, three. I'll do about four passes on it and stick to a little 24 by 24 inch uh, working area. Uh, how do you determine that? Is this, I usually go with uh, whatever it's uh, six times the ratio of the pad. So one, two, three, four, five, six. That would be my working area. Here we go. five passes. Now that the machine has fully turned off, take it off the body panel. And uh, let me grab some microfibers so we can inspect to see how much paint correction we're getting. Uh, Sebastian tried that side. He said that that was the best scenario. So um, I'm gonna do this side and see what's going on on this panel. And we haven't touched this panel, so it's gonna be hard to see it on white. Cause like I said, it's a very neutral color. So you can't see the swirl marks as much but we'll do a little before and after right here. Let me bring in my microfiber uh, towels to wipe this off. And that's the thing, to make the paint the best possible finish uh, possible before you install the ceramic coating. And that's actually where all the labor comes in. You know, there's a lot of labor, not only on the prep work, but in all of the polishing stages. And then afterwards to properly apply the ceramic coating. But I don't want to get ahead of myself because we still got a lot of uh, real estate to polish. As you guys know, big charger is a big size sedan. So we got a lot of um, panels to polish. So we're going to go ahead and uh, keep going at it. ceramic coating. Uh, this time around we are using beads HD ceramic coating. Uh, this product I don't think you can get over the counter but there are a lot of coatings that you can get over the counter. There are many coatings that are very user friendly. The only thing that will distinguish uh, a pro level coating between an entry level coating is mainly the warranty. Uh, the warranty will be given by your installer. This way if anything goes bad with the coating 
or if there's maintenance to be done, then your installer will take care of that. Obviously, with a coating that's over the counter, that really doesn't apply. So those are some of the things that you could be looking at when you are installing a ceramic coating. If you're keeping your car for two or three years, by all means, get an over-the-counter coating and apply it. I'm going to show you guys how to apply it. It's not that complicated, honestly. Just go ahead and, and uh, open up your coating. Most of it is a, it's a solvent-based coating, so it is kind of syrupy. Just put a couple of drops here and there. This is a, a microfiber uh, applicator that has been wrapped into a little foam block. Make sure you cover, close your, your bottle so it doesn't crystallize. And then, uh, well, I'm right here I'm in a, in a bumper situation, but all you wanna do is just get even coverage. So I'll break this bumper by half. I'll stop right here, then come right back. And then I'll start going up and down like this. Try to get as much as I can into all the little nooks and crannies with my applicator. And basically what you guys are doing is just you're spreading the product and you're letting the solvent flash for about a minute. In about a minute, it'll be ready for you guys to wipe it off. I have two of my guys coming behind me wiping off the, uh, the excess coating. And once the coating has fully, fully cured onto the, the paint, it becomes part of your paint in a molecular level, so it is part of your paint. This way, the only way that the coating will be removed is if you actually get a polisher and polish it off. So any uh, heavy degreasers, uh, uh, spray waxes, none of that stuff is gonna actually remove the coating. So we got another coat to go because we are doing two coats here. So Seb, I, I did from here, de aquí, para atrás. So, Here's Sebastian coming behind me, taking off the excess coating. We are using uh, two towels. Sometimes you could do a three towel method. The first towel will remove about, I'll say 50, 60% of the coating. There's still gonna be a little bit left. So you come with the second towel, take off 70, 80% of the coating. And if you, you know, really wanna make sure that everything's off, then you do one last swipe with another towel. Preferably if you do different colors, uh, so like that, you know, the purple towel you did for the first wipe, the blue towel you did for your second wipe, and then, you know, a yellow towel will be for your third wipe. And that's pretty much how you apply a ceramic coating. Because see, as you can see, we have it all up in the lift right here, so we can get all the rocker panels without having to bend over, and we have really good access to all the panels here. Those are some of the things that you could consider when you are gonna uh, hire an installer. Uh, it is a lengthy process, so be prepared to wait at least anywhere between two, sometimes three days, depending on how extensive you are gonna get with the paint correction. So if it's something that you're gonna do by yourself, you know, be ready. It's probably gonna take you a good three, four days if you are by yourself. Here we take two to three days, and I have a couple of guys helping me out, so you can imagine this is a lengthy process. It's not something that you're gonna finish you know, in a couple of hours. So keep that in mind if you do decide to do it on yourself. So keep that in mind if you do decide to do it by yourself. All right, so I don't know if we could capture this because obviously the white paint, it's, it's hard to capture uh, the coating going on on white paint, but you do kind of see like a oil slick kind of streaking going on right here. Get it closer. Uh, I don't know. See right here? That's the coating actually flashing. And that's the, that's the other thing that you wanna do. You wanna get uh, a soft light like this. So like that, on your third wipe, you're passing it with this light and you're making sure that all the high spots are taken care of and you don't leave any high spots. So that's a, a quick little tip for you guys. If you decide to do it on your, by yourself, get yourself some, uh, a soft, soft light so like that you can see all the high spots. Now I've seen a lot of um, bad ceramic coating jobs, especially on black paint, that you see a lot of high spots. That's because, you know, either the installer didn't uh, look for them or he hurried up on the project. Oh, look, look right here, you can see it a lot better. See it there? 
Hopefully the camera picks it up. Right here I apply the coating, and right here I have not. Okay, so now the bumper has been fully applied with ceramic coating. So now that the whole body has been ceramic coated, the customer has requested to do one more thing, and we're gonna take it to the wheels off ceramic coating. This service, like the name says, we're taking the wheel off the car and we are cleaning the inner barrel, the outer face, and the calipers as well. Once it's thoroughly clean, we do apply a specific coating just meant for wheels. So like that, it's a little bit more heat resistant. It helps in keeping the wheel cleaner for longer periods of times. And if you have yourself a, a little electric pressure washer, it's the best tool that you'll need when it comes to wheel cleaning because a good pressure wash is all you're gonna need and most of the dirt will come off. So if you're considering applying ceramic coating to the wheels, like you're seeing here on the video, you have to take it off, thoroughly wash it, apply ceramic coating, and then don't forget to tighten up the lug nuts as tight as possible. So there you guys have it. We are done with this beautiful project. Dodge Charger Red Eye got ceramic coated. You guys saw how we take the process of ceramic coating. Very serious here at High End Detail. Thoroughly wash, thoroughly cleanse. Then we do the paint correction. Ceramic coated gets applied evenly. We let it cure overnight. The following day, we did the ceramic coating on the wheels. And then later on, we called the client and it was ready to go because honestly, the ceramic coating just takes about six to 12 hours to fully cure and it's ready to go. So if you are interested in applying ceramic coating, just know that moving forward, it is not an easy uh, process. I'm not trying to frighten you and telling you not to do it. If you have time, you got the space, you got the tools, by all means, do it. But if you want to leave it to the pros, more than welcome to stop by our shop and we could go over different options. Uh, ceramic coating on paint, ceramic coating on wheels. There's even ceramic coating for leather as well. We also have ceramic coating for glass. So there's many things that can get ceramic coated. All of those variables will depend on the pricing. So there's not a one price thing. Uh, the size of the vehicle always determine pricing as well. The condition of the vehicle plays role in pricing as well. Any questions that you guys may have, you know how to reach us either on our website or through here on our YouTube channel. So guys, thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys on the next video.